Holy moly, what the heck? Pay it in cash. The ATM fee is only a dollar. Korea has more choices. <laughs> I see the grime in the subway trains and such. Do you hear that, guys? This isn't Korea anymore. It's Japan. I finally made it out here. I'm at Kansai International Airport, which is Osaka. And I'm gonna give you my first initial impressions of what I think about Japan. Alright, <laughs> first impressions really matter. Overall, I can just say it's not as modern as Korea, as crazy as that might sound to some of you guys because you think, oh, Japan's the most modern, but the airport is definitely showing its age, it's slightly old, and yeah, the people that are telling us what to do as far as the quarantine and such, um, not as professional as I would expect in Korea. But like, Korea has a whole level of professionalism. So, I mean, that's, that's normal. I mean, compared to Bangkok, maybe it's on par. Um, but yeah, what is going on here? I don't think I could be recording. I'll, I'll, I'll check back with you guys after I deal with this fiasco. All right, just past the customs. And, oh my gosh, the escalator doesn't even work here. And uh, it's sort of a surreal experience for me here in Japan so far. Um, it, it sort of looks like uh, the quarantine places that you see like in the news in uh, like China. Like it has red and yellow like signs everywhere. I can't take videos over there. And the agents are all behind like those, uh, I don't know, it's like plastic curtains. Uh, I just sort of feel like I don't know, I got a disease or something. But, you know, Japan's sort of the latest in uh, trying to open up their borders, I guess. Um, but whatever the case, um, the people seem really nice, I have to say. If I have to compare it, um, Koreans would be like a professional type of politeness here. It's more like, I think they're just polite people in general. They just don't really speak loud. I feel weird speaking right now. Um, yeah, and the customs agents, they're, they're really nice. So, Korean customs agents um, and J Japanese customs agents, yeah, they're just nice. They just do their jobs. Um, I think the nicest one would have been like Taiwan. They're like happy to have an American there. And you know, your experience may vary if you're a different nationality. But as an American, uh, I feel, you know, not threatened out here. It's not like... You know, Bangkok, for example, where it seems like they're always scrutinizing you to see if, you know, you're doing something else. And look at that, just in time. And yeah, everything is somewhat pretty efficient out here. I like that. Um, I'm sort of spoiled being in Korea that long. Overall, um, pretty good impressions. Okay, let me just pass the customs now, and then uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, I just passed the customs, and you know, one thing I will have to say is the customs declaration process is the most technologically advanced. They have like a kiosk and everything was new. Maybe it's a new system that they set up. So that one I will say technologically is better than Korea, but yeah, the airport itself, it's showing its age. I mean, <laughs> these yellow signs back there, that's so dumb long. The, the Thais must have copied uh, the Japanese on this. But, uh, oh, one other thing I do want to mention is <laughs> this is the only country, except for Indonesia, I haven't released my Indonesia vlog yet, the only country where I'm clearly in the visitor line and clearly everyone is not Japanese, but they will insist on continuing to speak to you in Japanese, like we understand Japanese. <laughs> So, but I mean, everything is sort of relatively understandable because, you know, it's sign language, right? Just like, sort of go there, go there. Um, but overall, I highly recommend if you are gonna come to Japan right now to do the Visit Japan registration. They'll give you a fast track for uh, quarantine procedures, etc. And um, they'll approve your documents beforehand so you know that your vaccine documents are legit so you don't have any surprises and then um, you also get to go to a special line for uh, customs decoration 
Because if not, I would have had to wait in the longer line. But oh my gosh, look at this! Mega Yoshi! <laughs> I'm definitely in Japan. Um, next thing, <laughs> what? There's a Nintendo check in. Uh, next thing I gotta do though is, um, yeah, deal with the transportation system here, which I hear isn't too friendly. Well, uh, yeah, they have everything in not only English and Japanese, which is pretty standard, but there must be lots of Koreans here because they have everything in Korean as well as Chinese, well, obviously Chinese. Um, so yeah, so far not too many problems navigating, but it definitely isn't as intuitive as some of the other airports I've been to. <laughs> okay, okay, now I'm finally getting the Japan vibes that I imagined in the anime. Like, what the heck is up with these lights? Ah, I, I, I wish I'm capturing it in the way that I'm sensing it, but just the sounds and the... Yeah, the ambience. Ah, yeah, I'm getting the, the Japanese anime vibes right now. I'm in a different country. Okay, um, so they say as a tourist you get a discount on the JR. Holy crap, okay. Ah, jeez, okay, I will definitely, I already expected this, but transportation probably the most complicated out of any Asian country because they have all these different companies like Nankai what the okay that, that's the JR um Aero Plaza okay I'm gonna go to this JR place uh they're supposed to have a special thing for us Okay, so this is where the stereotype is not holding true, where I always imagine the Japanese just do things much more simpler and aesthetically. It's, it's just so cluttered. It's really hard to understand what I need to do. Um, even though I already did research on what I'm supposed to do. Okay, alright. Um, they made people available to us Americans that are simpler and like to interact with people. Holy moly, what the heck are all these options? Alright, so uh, <laughs> what's happening is I have to go get some cash. They don't accept ATM card. Uh, they could, I mean I'm gonna explain a little later. But let me just get the cash. And they don't even have currency exchanges open at around 8pm. So, oh man. Japan is turning out to be quite boring. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, this is definitely not Thailand. Oh, oh, but they do have English guidance. I mean, I don't know, I might be biased with Korea because with Korea, I speak enough Korean. So I might not notice the inconvenience, but I still feel like there's more English. But let me see if I can figure this out. It is good that they give you a notification that they will charge a fee. Because a lot of uh, accounts won't do that. Oh, I can only withdraw like about $50, I think. Wait, is that $500? Okay, I realized the minimum amount you can withdraw is 100 bucks. So Japan is definitely baller. And the ATM fee is only a dollar. Huh. But there is a little trick. Um, I use Charles Schwab. And they actually even refund the other companies ATM charges like at the end of the month and they don't even charge a fee either so this is like a little travel hack guys if you're gonna be traveling get Charles Schwab think I don't know why it's taking so long though hope it doesn't eat up my only ATM card that I brought here <laughs> I'm getting nervous like it's been a good minute and it's still same processing I've never had this happen to me in my life Wow, Japan's a bit interesting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Please contact your financial institution. What? It doesn't work? All right, so huh, I'm gonna try to get some money exchange at a hotel. Generally, hotels do this. Let's see if this one does here. Uh, Wi-Fi here? Wi-Fi? Yes. Thank you. 
So Siri tells me a uh, dollar is 131 yen. They actually have a machine here that's gonna give me 125.70. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Not gonna lie. I'm just gonna do it. So these are actually probably about, I don't know, a good seven years old. Let's see if it accepts it because there's some countries that. What? Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, I get that much back. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Whoa, that was fast. Oh, it's peeping at me. No, okay, don't, don't close. I want my money. Okay. Oh. Yeah, guys, this is the Nico Hotel, by the way. It's right by the airport. I'll show you where it is. But before I do, I just got to point out the... Older Japanese dudes got like a lot of swag. <laughs> I'm sorry, Benjamin. Um, you got the receding hairline going on. This this guy's got like a perm. As soon as you enter through the door, you'll see a Lawson's right there, and to the right, the Hotel Nikko Kansai Airport. Just go downstairs, and the lobby's right there. And to the left of the front desk is the machine. But people there are really helpful. Uh, their level of English was definitely better than at the airport, as you would expect from any hotel. <laughs> yeah, they're really having fun. Okay, back up the lines. I'm gonna skip that area and tourists get the privilege of going right in here. And uh, a lot of signs, a lot of signs, just follow the arrows. And yep, right here. Right, the reason I need to get cash is because if you want this Kansai One Pass with the Atom Boy, you gotta pay it in cash. It is an extra thousand more. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, but it's better than Hello Kitty or this thing. But you definitely wanna get your stuff here because as a tourist, you get a discount on um, going to Kyoto. Uh, this, they say, is usually like 3,000 or 2,500. It's like a ridiculous discount, my girlfriend tells me. So, yeah, highly recommend it. And if you already have one of these eco cars, you can come back and just get the discount. So, that's all cool. Oh, yeah, that's the original price. 3,400. Yeah, it's almost like half the price. So, tourist privilege for the win. And, um,. On the website it said this didn't have an expiration date, but she tells me that both of these have a 10 year expiration date, which for all intents and purposes is, is fine, I guess. It's quite long. So how this eco car works, by the way, is you're actually getting your money back because I get 2500 in credit and this one has 1500 and basically the deposit and if you return the card you get about half of that back is about $5. So, the only difference is you're just having to deposit more initially to get the Atom Boy. And apparently this is supposed to have discounts, but I don't know. We'll figure that out later because the train is about to leave in four minutes and I gotta catch it. Alright guys, uh, I think that might be the train. I don't know if that's the train. Please don't leave, please don't leave. Oh, come on. Right there. If that's the train, it's gonna leave in two minutes. And I don't know if that's going the right way or not. Oh, shit. Okay, signage here is very confusing. Oh, what the heck is this? Yasu? Okay, I gotta figure this out. Okay, if you look up there, it says for Shin Osaka Kyoto. And he said Kyoto. So, oosh. I think I just made it. Oh my god. Uh. All right, I'm on this train, one way or another. Uh, this sort of is like a uh, KTX in Korea. Okay, so I wanna say stuff, but another thing I noticed is people are super quiet here. Um, even the announcement is too quiet for the noise that this train is making, so I can't even hear the announcement. Uh, but I'll just say that as far as getting this thing, they didn't even want my passport. I could have just filled anything in there. So, I mean, even my Japanese girlfriend could actually <laughs> theoretically just walk in there and speak in Chinese because they also speak Chinese there. Um, and uh, say, hey, I want the tourist one and I want the discount. 
because my initial impression of transportation costs in Japan was ridiculously high. <laughs> it's, it's the highest in Asia. It's just everywhere in Asia is pretty cheap. Like Korea is probably the cheapest along with Taiwan. And that's cheaper than Bangkok, by the way. Um, but <laughs> Japan is like, it's not even five times, it's like ten times more expensive. It's, I don't know what's wrong with this place. But okay, well, anyways, uh, this is just my initial first impressions. By the way, guys, this is the discounted ticket they give you. And uh, he's gotta go check. So, yeah, just. Uh, <laughs> Make sure you have that, you can't just like hop. You can't even, you gotta put this into the gate. That's what you missed because I was in a hurry. And it punches that little hole there. And I imagine you would have to put this through again when you get to Kyoto. Uh, and there seems to be some kind of a magnetic strip there. Which, <laughs> I don't know, out of curiosity. They gave me this little guide. And it has this travel support thing because they printed it on here it has the same magnetic strip I'm just curious if I put this into <laughs> I wonder if that will actually work I don't know I'm just I'm just curious about how the technology works I mean I'm not trying to like rip them off or anything I, I'm just curious how they stop people from just inserting this well, I don't know. okay just a little side note. Oh, and by the way, important thing to note is that these tickets that you get, um, it's gonna be only valid for one day. And if you get the round trip, it's only valid for 14 days. And I'm gonna be here for a month and 10 days. So I didn't get the round trip. But they said I can get the one day again uh, in Kyoto when I'm coming back. So, yeah, you'll have to just keep watching my vlogs until then to find out if that really happens. But the round trip isn't any cheaper. I mean, it's just basically one way, which was 1800 times two, which is 3600. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get another one way from Kyoto when I'm ready to leave. So I don't really see the benefit of a round trip ticket, honestly. Unless maybe you're in an area that has a station that doesn't have tourist support, but Kyoto is pretty big. Wow, this is interesting. All right, this is gonna have to be a, a rude American because there's you know sensory overload here. I gotta say it when I see it. But do you see that? I swear I haven't seen English there so far. And the only reason I know that the next station is Tennonji is because I see it in Korea. <laughs> I think they have... Oh! Finally English came out. I mean, they're displaying English, Korean, Chinese, and Japanese with no bias. So, yeah. Speaking English is not going to be any superior here so far um, than speaking Korean or Chinese you're gonna be treated the same. <laughs> Which is something I want to say because uh, I had a friend that's coming to Japan and she's Vietnamese and she's like, I'm so scared. She only speaks Korean and Vietnamese. Um, and she said, how are you gonna communicate there? And I'm like, well, I speak English <laughs> really well, so I'll be fine. But I feel that in Japan, if you speak Korean, or Chinese are good too. There's only one other country I can say that for and it is Taiwan. If you're in Taiwan and you are traveling, even if you speak Chinese, Korean, I mean, even the street food vendors will speak Korean. So um, yeah, Japan seems very multilingual or maybe just they don't speak English that well so everything is about as equal, who knows. But this is just my first impression so far. Alright, so we're passing through Osaka now. And uh, we'll definitely be out here too because it's super close. But, oh, my initial impressions. Oh, how do I put this? It's like a modern Hong Kong. That's, that's the only thing I can reference because that's the only other place that's somewhat similar to this. 
a modern Hong Kong Taiwan. They got graffiti and stuff. That's interesting. In Korea, they would have cleaned that up. I mean, it's um, definitely cyberpunk, I think. Okay, guys, so I couldn't see outside because it's quite dark. But because my GoPro died, I'm now using my Sony camera and it's brighter than what it actually is. And just looking at the architecture and everything, it's so Japan. Um, in a sense that, like, the buildings are pretty low compared to Seoul, for example, or even Bangkok. And, like, everything is blocky and square. So it's, like, exactly like the animes. And <laughs> so that's, I'm enjoying that. But, um,. I don't know, this may come as a surprise to those of you guys who haven't really traveled much of Asia, but Japan has like an old school vibe. It's not modern compared to like Seoul, for example. Um, it has like a very rustic vibe and even some of the more modern areas of Bangkok is probably more modern than here, although I'm sure the really modern areas like in Tokyo, etc. I mean, I mean, I haven't been there, but this is just based on my impression so far. Like, I see the grime in the subway trains and such. It's, it's like, I don't know. Like, I guess this is breaking some stereotypes. It, it's not as clean as I thought. I, I thought like, you know, cause like my Japanese girlfriend is so freaking clean about everything. Overall, I have good first vibes about Japan. I feel privileged as a tourist. Um, very similar to just sort of like Korea, like you pay less, you get special things for being a tourist instead of like having to pay twice the amount like in Thailand for example, uh, where you get double priced. Or, you know, if I had to compare it to like Taiwan, Hong Kong, eh, you don't get any more or less. It's about even there. But if you have any questions um, about this whole process of coming to the airport, etc., let me know. The only thing I didn't do was get a SIM card because, I mean, you could get it here. But for me, there isn't much of a benefit because my girlfriend's just gonna give me her SIM card. And, you know, when you're traveling, I don't think you should be so hooked on your phone. Like, make an attempt at not using your phone. You know, my iPhone, for example, is still an iPhone 11 with a broken screen that has a camera that can't focus because it forces me to use my camera and vlog, you know, in a disciplined way. So I, I recommend that you don't get a SIM card because so far I haven't had any issues with finding Wi-Fi. Now, something I do want to mention though that I didn't really like is when you're getting the free Wi-Fi here, they are very intrusive as far as privacy, you know. I would say in this sense, maybe Bangkok is probably the best. When you're just getting Wi-Fi, they're just like, oh, just click and you'll get Wi-Fi. In Korea, sometimes you'll have to have like a Korean phone number or something. Or, yeah, I mean, I haven't really had to enter too much stuff. Maybe, yeah, I can't really remember, but here, they make you enter an email and then go in there and then register that email from an email they sent, etc., just to get free Wi-Fi. I don't know what's up with that. It seems very, I don't know, you know, uh, obtrusive to my privacy. This is just my American that's speaking. Um, but yeah, I don't really like that. That's probably about the only con. Uh, and the internet is so slow, I can't even use it. All I can do is just like, text my girlfriend that I'm arriving, that's about it. You know, if I had to be completely fair and not biased and say something negative about this experience, um, if I compare it to Korea, it's a little less convenient. But, you know, if you've heard anybody that's been in Korea and lived in Korea, that's the overall thing. Why do you stay in Korea? Uh, there's so many people that I know that originally wanted to go to Japan, but then they were doing a layover in Korea and they're like, well, I ended up staying here because it's so convenient. Like, <laughs> yeah, Korea is like the country of convenience. So compared to that, it's slightly less convenient, but I feel it's, it's more straightforward than maybe Bangkok, you know? Um, the thing that Bangkok has though is it's not expensive. 
so you could just like end up you know paying for convenience but here I don't know it's like that strange balance where it's relatively straightforward if you just seek the information but it's just not as convenient as Korea but yeah it's probably it's definitely the most expensive out of all the places I've been to so far just to even travel but anyways um, let me go ahead and you know video more of the outside here so you don't see my face talking the whole time by the way, uh, notice I have New Era written in Korean here. I did that because uh, another thing I noticed about Japan is people just sort of look like me. <laughs> yeah. Um, look at this, uh, the Kyoto Tower. Kyoto Tower. Oh, the Korean flag. Yeah, that's sort of true. And oh, I forgot to mention a very important factor. The weather here is like, I don't want to say it's warm. Oh but <laughs> Compared to Korea, it's just, well, Busan is about the same weather, a little bit colder, and Jeju Island is a little bit warmer, but right now, you see, I'm not wearing a padding, like, no. yeah, Mayu looks like she's really cold right now, but... Because I'm on the electronic uh, kickboard. <laughs> oh, she was on an electric scooter? A but, scooter yeah, the weather here is, uh, it's freaking warm to me, it's like fall weather in Korea. Because in Korea, it's like negative 12 degrees at night, plus wind chill factor. If you walk outside, it's you're freezing. Like, I, I know some people have asked me like, oh, I like cold weather because I think it makes me live longer. I, I honestly don't think, I think there's a certain limit to how cold it could be. Um, like, weather right now in Kyoto? Well, I could, I could really do this. Like, uh, yeah, I'm just wearing a long sleeve shirt like a t-shirt kind of thing and then just like a jacket and it's like it's really good it's almost like Bangkok weather in the winter almost uh, I, I haven't been to Bangkok nobody, for a while nobody wears long <laughs> sleeve in Bangkok <laughs> that's true but yeah I mean uh, yeah it's, it's quite good ooh, ooh. Um, little girls like running around uh, okay, are you hungry? let's eat <laughs> yeah I want <laughs> I want to say convenience store food, but I don't know. What do you think we should eat, mind you? Wow! So I just thought it was bad economy, but Mayu's just telling me it's because it's New Year's. Well, at nine o'clock, sorry. Huh? I don't know. This, this just sort of seems like the countryside to me. Yeah. It is the yeah. <laughs> Nobody say this is the standard. <laughs> of yeah, because like Seoul and Bangkok, this this would not happen. It's always open. <laughs> And the other thing Mayu tells me is that New Year's is celebrated as the only New Year's in Japan. Like Korea and Thailand, we think the Lunar New Year is just as important, but not here. Because they're like, we are not controlled by the Chinese. Ooh. Wow, look at this. What the heck? It, like everything looks like a... Uh, <laughs> like the stereotype. Um. Yeah. Uh. Korean stuff is ridiculously expensive here. Funky. Yeah, I, I should I should bring some Korean stuff and sell it to pay for my plane ticket. Okay, this part I'm not too impressed. It it looks like an old mall. <laughs> It honestly looks like the underground subway malls in Seoul. It is. Yeah? Subway, yeah. Always, yeah. Yeah. But they sell diesel here? So it tells me it's one of the more modern areas. But it's really not modern. Alright, we're at a supermarket. Alright. Food is... I mean, I don't think it's that expensive. Wait, is no wait. It's like four dollars, right? Okay, so my initial impression is food is not expensive, but the portions are small, so it is expensive. Uh, Ma, you sort of rushing me to buy something, but the other thing I noticed though is compared to Korea and Bangkok, 
the variety of convenience store food is just oh my god it, this is not convenience store okay high end this is high end supermarket yes okay well then then i take it back then this is this is not e-mart <laughs> korea has more not choices e not e <laughs> but i don't know the, um even at e-mart they don't have these little cute variety of snacks uh what is this hot place? the variety is good although this starving korean is looking at the portion and thinking i need about five of these she was kind enough to put it in a bag oh thank you yeah so Mayu says this is high because it's imported uh another thing i noticed is the aisles are super tiny here yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Ethan is a bargain hunter. If you take the bus, it is two thirty. So it's about two dollars. But the subway, you see that big like circle? <laughs> that, yeah, they make it very obvious that that's where you are. Okay. Yeah. It, li it literally says this station. <laughs> this, this looks like a board game. And then um, ignore the red price. That's for kids but the black price is what you pay so you start with a base price of 220 and then it goes up to 260 if you go all the way to marutamachi up there so um if we go to that other station we're gonna pay 220 save about 40 cents and get a minute scenic tour from mayu Yeah, hungry. Ethan is a cheapskate. He has to save money because he has to stay here for a whole month. I really just feel like they could have made this easier. Why does this look so complex? Okay, because it mentioned that all small street, the people wants to visit the small temples. Oh yeah? Okay, anyway, K11. Okay. Right over there, it says K11. Okay. Over there. Oh, it's, it's, it's so much easier in Korea. It, it, are the the different lines like color coded? Yeah, it's color coded too. Oh, okay. At least we got yeah, that. Red color. And then let's say if you want to go to red, the, does it say, "Oh, follow this thing"? Like in Korea, it says red, and it just has arrows to red. You don't even need to like read numbers. <laughs> you just like follow colors there. Um, if you see the color blind people, what are you gonna do? I I don't know. I mean. I think, you know, I, I'm gonna have epileptic seizures just being in Japan. Maybe you should change your glasses that the people who is uh, colorblind. Colorblind? <laughs> people who you should yeah, experience. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot uh, this do do, like, whole uh, series in law color so that we <laughs> desaturate the colors here. Yeah, um, you guys might call me weird, but I like this dirtiness. Like they it's didn't. Uh, yeah, maybe it's like stains. Yeah, it, actually, it's quite clean. Okay, okay, and this is very new. It's even like. It's new? <laughs> it's 2022, July. Well, it's, it's definitely not new. It's all scratched. Like, no, you know. They just put a new from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, um, this would not happen in Korea. Except maybe, like, uh, I, I mean, even in Pusan or something, it's still cleaner than this. So. Uh, it it feels authentic in you know Japan. What? You know what? The thing is, in Kyoto, huh. being new, it's something people don't really accept. Uh, yeah. Being old yeah. or being like classy huh. is kind of beauty in Kyoto. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I sort of like that actually. That's my style. Because Ethan's getting older, huh, maybe he'll be more popular <laughs> here. So in Kyoto, old people like us will be popular <laughs> because we're old and classy <laughs> oh my gosh my um old and torn is not good uh you, you can get away with this like in korea they think you're homeless then i am <laughs> this is this is taking old and classy a bit too far this <laughs> This I is something it. we got in Thailand. Oh my gosh, I have so many shoes. I should just give you some. I'll, I'll just bring some shoes from Thailand that I'm not using. There's so many. 
But by the way, her and I, we have like the same shoe size, so <laughs> she can wear whatever. Yes. By the way, Mayu, what is that thing he's... <laughs> all I see is one kilogram. Something just seems really wrong with that picture. Losing your weight. Wait, is he, is he doing surgery? Is that a lump of fat? Liposuction? What? Um, that is one kilo, kilo of, of fat? fat? Wow, Japanese really do some crazy shock advertising. So another thing I take for granted being in Korea is that all the subway lines, there's like 15 of them. Like there's a lot more in Seoul. I think it might be the biggest one. You think Tokyo has more than Seoul? I don't know, but Seoul might, Seoul might have more, but Tokyo has more? Okay, well Seoul has like 15, 20, I don't know, it's, it's a lot, but they're all connected. Meaning, once you check in, when you transfer, you're not paying any extra money. Now, it doesn't mean that it's the same company that operates all of them, like the Shinbundang line, etc. I know that they're done by like a private company, but it's all done on the same payment system and also you're going through the same gates and you're not paying like much more for it but here if you're transferring to another company like here she's telling me there's two that's operated by one company the green and the red one and then there's like another company that you have to like check out and then check back in again so it might be at the same station but yeah it adds to the complicatedness and you have to figure out the prices again if you're switching to a different company so that just adds on top of the fact that it's already more expensive but I want to say the subway isn't as expensive as I originally thought because you know the JR $18 is not too bad. I mean, <laughs> that's tourist price. Yeah, that's tourist price. That's that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm talking to tourists. So Eighteen dollars isn't <laughs> okay. too bad. Um, it's like half the price of a taxi fare to go across Seoul, if you want to put it that way. Um, and the subways, if you're just moving within the same area. The base price starts at two dollars, which is, you know, it's only about twice as expensive as Seoul. Now, I imagine if you start going really far, it's gonna get really expensive, because in Seoul you can travel like literally two, three hours, and it's still gonna cost you about two dollars. But it's not as expensive as I was fearing and other people telling me. So. Get the eco car card. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is definitely classic. Not only, I think this is new. They must have changed the fabric, but they kept it this tacky green. I like it. And um, tacky green. <laughs> yeah, the 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 mattress is. Uh, is this a mattress? It's, I think it's very old. Yeah. Um, but even the entrance music, ding 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 Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. That was interesting. Alright guys, so, um, I was noticing on the subway, in all fairness, Japan has just as many English signage it's just that it's harder to see, and I think I understand the reason. For example, you see how it says Kyoto Station? Because they're using Chinese characters. <laughs> yeah, they even have to abbreviate this. It, it just looks really small in it. It gets lost. And that's because they're using Chinese characters that represent like really long, a lot of syllables and words, because it's, it's like a picture. Whereas like in Korean, it's phonetic. The writ written language is phonetic. So the longer the syllables are, the longer the Korean is going to be. So the ratio of the size is going to be about the same. Alright, so this is traditional Chinese and it's that katagana, which is, that's the phonetic one. So if they use only this, then the width would be good, but they still use a very small font for the English. 
but in Korea, this this is they only would always use that. So there's enough width to make this tall enough. Because imagine if they're only using that, then they have to shrink this. And the other thing that only works here in Japan is, do you see how this is <laughs> is written vertically? Because Japanese can read top down. So they put the English sideways and you have to literally be looking at it like this. So, <laughs> yeah, the Japanese uh, written language is not designed for us English readers. But I guess it's cool like in a sense like I feel like I'm in Alice in Wonderland. Like everything is sort of backwards, but it's interesting. It's, it's uh, it makes your brain think. But anyways, now, now I gotta help carry this because Mayu was being a trooper and helping me vlog. Yeah, again, like, they throw up the English. It's so weird. But surprisingly, they put the Korean and Chinese in small letters over there. What's the difference? There's no difference with the Chinese, is there? Yeah. Oh, there is. The first character is different. Wait. Yeah, old way. It's, is, is it different? Slightly different. Slightly different. Slightly different. Okay, well. Only this, only this one. Do you think a Chinese person could recognize that though if they looked yeah. at it? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, but they're being courteous to the Chinese. So, it's New Year's and apparently this is the biggest holiday in Japan. Oh, which, which is very different. Like, in Korea and Thailand, New Year's isn't the biggest holiday. We have Thanksgiving and Thailand has Songkran. Um, but that's why it's so dead, so I'm not gonna have initial first impressions on that. But the architecture, it's so square. <laughs> like everything is so square, it's so Japanese. And the um, ironic thing is, Mayu says, it's Chinese. They learned the architecture from China. And the other thing is, it's so quiet here. Even the sound of my suitcase. Your voice <laughs> and my voice. Yeah, I'm gonna. Like this small. I'm gonna have to start using um, my external it's mic. Like this kind of small thing is very like more like Chinese. No Chinese, sorry. Just Kyoto. Kyoto, yeah. Kyoto like small stuff. Okay, well at least um, Ethan feels tall in Kyoto. I have okay, yet that, to the... come across Wait, someone that's. Oh yeah? What What is that? It's like Christmas for Japanese. Yeah, we have a Christmas and <laughs> we have more Chinese New Year's. And uh, I really like all the cute characters. Like everything has to have a cute character here. Like Koreans like cute characters too, but they use less of it because they think it's tacky sometimes. Um, but look at that! Oh, Kumamoto kun! This is so cool! Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I'm, I'm one-handing this while I... Look at that. This is why she can be my girlfriend. <laughs> oh. What the heck, guys? I thought Suntory only does whiskey, but they also do coffee. Suntory do everything. Oh, they do everything? <laughs> wow! Something is, yeah, I mean, I, this is what I expected. The vending machines are definitely colorful here. And uh, I've never seen so many bicycles. Look at that. My, you already took a bite mm, from our, <laughs> I want to say it's convenience store, but it's not. Premium supermarket food. But if premium supermarket food is only like three to four dollars, is it cheaper mm -hmm. at Lawson's? Um, yeah, it tastes better. Ah, no, it tastes obviously here is better. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, guys, um, <laughs> this is just my first impressions of Japan. There's actually a lot more. Um, I can make a whole vlog about the impressions that I got about. Mayu's 
house. What? <laughs> Literally, it's just, just she doesn't want, I don't know if she doesn't want to show no, it, no, no, <laughs> but, no. but it's just oh my gosh, I don't I don't even know where to start. Um, everything from the shower, just how they have the toilets, it's just really, really, really a culture shock. But whatever the case, um, this is gonna be. <laughs> what she thinks is normal there's just like no you know this uh is part of my life. most hello, like hello. Ja japanese people live in the most hello. different way you'll ever imagine hello. you know like most people around the world like have similar homes i realized um but uh yeah i'm just gonna wrap it up here guys uh sort of my initial impressions Kansai Airport, how to get around. Um, there's a lot of useful information there, I think, that it took me a while to research because for some reason the websites aren't all that great in Japan for tourists. So that's another initial impression. But yeah, there's 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 a lot more I want to talk about, like, oh, my first initial impressions of the people here, etc. But, you know, honestly, it's New Year's and there's not that many people and I don't want to, like, give you an impression of something that's not normal uh, i'll be here for another month i have a lot of things that i want to try to do like i even have like a geiger meter to see how radioactive things are <laughs> yeah literally i'm gonna i'm gonna do that i'm gonna like check all the food uh the water make sure it's not radioactive from hero what not hiroshima well, well whatever that nuclear power plant fukushima okay anyways uh hope you found this interesting and i'm really excited to finally be traveling again live travel asia guys and um let me know if there's anything that you want me to do particularly you know i'm going to be exploring all the little neighborhoods here in kyoto because i'm going to be here for a whole month and we still haven't decided but mayu has like three days off and we'll probably travel around somewhere in the kanzai area and uh you know there's just a lot of things for me to explore out here so hope to see you guys again i'll be releasing a steady stream of vlogs again and um yeah hope you enjoy live travel japan <laughs> even put subtitles up and down on the side for Netflix. By the way, we're watching a Korean show about Korea. The subtitles were not originally like that. It's like a documentary on broth. Um, as far as the food... Can I be honest? I'm gonna be honest and say it, it's good, but... It should be hot. Yeah, a bit more on the saltier side compared to what I'm used to in Korea. Uh, like the kimchi doesn't taste like Korea either, but I like it. It has a gingery taste. I mean, everything just tastes different here. So that's what I like. It's different. Mm.